Stella King Show. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Stella King Show. I'm your host once again, Miss Stella King. And today's topic is about relationships. Now I have two beautiful guesses on set today with me. Hi Janet. Hi. Hi Caroline. Hi. How are you guys today? Good. Hi. Okay, that's awesome. Great to have you here. Thanks guys for being on the show. No problem. Yes. Okay, so today guys, we're going to talk about different types of relationships. We know there are, you know, good relationships, maybe in terms of couples, um, toxic types, um, you know, abusive types. Well, we're going to figure it all out today and go into it. Okay. So Janet, hi, how are you? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. So I know you have a story on you. Yes. And I would like you to share a bit about it, if that's okay. Okay. So where do I start? Um, first of all, I would say, um, I'm, I was born in, the, in Jamaica. I came to the UK in 2002, at 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, when I came to the UK, mm -hmm. um, I was really young, didn't understand about relationships. And um, at the time, my, my families, they were really, you know, I had to grow up really quick because my families, they didn't really care. So um, I met a few friends, went down the wrong path, started to smoke, started to you know, drink, and um, met my first boyfriend at 17, mm -hmm. got pregnant, and when I got pregnant, my families, they didn't really like, they were, they cared, but not really. Yeah. Um, coming here at the time, at such a young age, I didn't really understand much about relationships, but I had to learn the hard way. And what I mean about the hard way is when I got pregnant, everything went really, really quick for me. Um, so, at the time, sorry. Sorry, no, take your time, it's um, fine. At the time, living here, it was hard for me being pregnant and um, didn't really have my status in the country. So, when I got pregnant, I had to, my brothers and my sisters that were living here at the time, they weren't really that supportive of me. So I had to move in with my then boyfriend. And he wasn't really in a stable position. He was going through a lot. Didn't really have his own home. He was living in a hostel. And so I had to like, I decided to move in with him. I didn't really know this guy really mm. like properly so this was the guy you were pregnant for yeah okay. and i got pregnant two months after meeting him oh, two right. months and i was 17 years old so it was everything went really really quick for me you know and um so when i got pregnant when i moved in with him everything just started to happen you know like he was abusing me we, we were like, you know, I was in and out of the hospital. Everything was just going really quick. Told my families, they didn't really have anything to say. They were like, oh, you have to stay with him because you can't move back with us because we don't really have a place for you to stay. So yeah, I had to like stay with him and go through it yeah. as a young girl, and you had nobody as a teenager. You, apart from him at the time? No. No one, wow. And um, after I gave birth, it, it was still happening. Yeah. The guy was like drinking, he was on drugs. Like, I was young, I didn't understand what was going on. Luckily, yeah. like, I was really strong. At that age, I was very, very strong to go through it. And yeah, just, everything just started oh, yeah. to fall into place. Yeah. I, I even like, there were time, times where I had to call the police. Uh, yeah, we were gonna go court. So was he physically? I had to drop the cases because yeah. he's my daughter's dad and I didn't really want him to get into trouble. Yeah. And, but it was still happening. So was he physically again. abusing you then? Yeah. As well as verbally? 
it must have been very difficult at that time. It was very difficult, you know, and then before, and then even though it was still going on, I had to get married to this guy. To the I got married guy. to him. Oh, wow. And I was like 19. Yes. Not just yet, I was 19 and I got married to him because I felt like it was the right thing to do. Getting married and, you know, religiously, you get Why married with right someone, thing. but yeah. I know he wasn't the right person. But as a per, as a young teenager growing up, living here, coming here from another country, not having my status, I had to get married to him, yeah. even though he was abusive. So, yeah, but everything now, everything changes. My daughter is 18 years old. She's 19 yeah. this year. That's awesome. And, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I had to learn the hard way growing up. Yeah. But now... Everything is fine. He's changed, and even the, well, I don't know if he's changed because we're not living together, together anymore. But I know that you know my daughter. That's the most important thing right now in my life. So um, Janet, how are you able to get out of that abusive relationship? Um, how I'm able to get out, basically, I had to tell my I had to tell myself, you know what, I have to do something about this. So. I went back to live with my family, it's my brother, and basically, when I went back to live with my brother, at the time, it, he wasn't living in a stable place. He was living with loads of men, guys, and I don't know, it's like the guys that, the guys that my brother basically was, he was doing like illegal stuff yeah and he's got loads of men around him that works for him and that was doing the same thing as him yeah and the guys when i sleep at night time i used to have them come in touching me and all of this so basically i was living with an abusive person yeah. and also going back into to another, place. another place that's not good yeah so so it was just basically was a reoccurrence, reoccurrence. So I stayed with my baby dad and he didn't really work out. It was still the same, but after my child was born, it went down a little bit. His abusive ways mm -hmm. went down a little bit, but it was still the same. And I went to live with a friend because I said to myself, I can't stay here because if I stay here, either one of us is going to he's going to die or something yeah. because there was one time where he picks me up like this he and strangled me and strapped me yeah did you mean literally strangled me like this no he hold me and he squeezed me like my side because he's like six foot three yeah so he's really really tall really edge oh my really God. and i took up a knife and i stabbed him in the chest right here wow but luckily at the time i didn't really yeah, he, I didn't really like. Yeah. Luckily, he he wasn't injured really bad, yeah. but for example, you know, we I had to escape that because if he, if I didn't go, then something would have happened to him or both or me. Yeah. So I went to live with a friend and was back and forth, moving different places, places. with friends and stuff, and yeah. So I ended up went to court. The council helped me a little bit and I slowly got got out of it, the, the relationship. Yeah. But he was still in my life because my daughter is there. Your daughter's still there, yeah. Yeah, but he wanted me to come back, but I didn't go back because I know how we what is. Was, yeah, what you'll be facing. Yeah, you what back. I'll be facing. So. Wow, wow. Yeah. Um, Caroline, hi. I know, so I know both of you are also friends. You guys have been friends for like the last eight years? Yeah, nine that's years. true, that's true. Am I correct? Yes. And yeah. you came from Poland at the same time as well. Mm -hmm. And you've also experienced toxic relationships. Um, yeah, please explain to us. Um, uh, yeah, so like me and Janet, we are probably obviously the, the, the best friends as well. And like you said, I'm from Poland and I came to England around nine years ago. Yeah. And yeah, during this time in England as well, in general in my life, I did experience toxic relationships. And and the the, the point is, that anybody I think anybody can can even intelligent woman 
they can find themselves in a toxic relationship. Yes. It's not a, such a thing. Sometimes I think people think about it as a sort of look, look at it from outside. Oh, it doesn't. The subject, it happened to some women, probably some women who have some tough experiences or some women uh, yeah. just particular group of that's That's not true. It can happen to you. It can happen yeah, to any woman. When you're in love with someone, especially if you're in love with the mm. person, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's easier for you to go back in the Indeed. relationship. Yeah. And even though you want to get out of it, it's hard to get out of it. Because, because like a woman, genuinely, she doesn't really love of her mind. Does yeah. she? Logically, she loves her, her you heart. You love the person and that person. She gives to that man. It's hurting you. you but because yeah. you love that person so much, you don't want to leave him, but he's he's not the right person for you. Because yeah. if someone loves you, then they wouldn't really do this yeah, to you. Yeah, you know? they won't hurt and you. My ex husband whatever he used to tell me oh but i love you and this is what love is like this, love is not something you hurt someone that's that's not love love yeah. is you know like you have a good relationships you know yeah and yeah. Um, yeah just like saying from more personal experience as well i was for kind of for a long time for at least uh, two years uh, well it wasn't a uh, uh, children involved there was no children involved but yes. i was also uh, trapped in a very toxic relationship when guy was abusive, physically abusive, worldly, he was very over controlling. Um, he used to control me more with a man, with a mental manipulation, with even physical manipulation. I had a days when he locked me, locked me, literally, and there was a neighbors in the house. He had a, uh, he was renting a house, which was yeah. nobody else lived in a house. So it was yeah. very easy situation for, for, for him. He just locked me inside the house when I had my mobile taken away and my keys. Uh, well, it was obviously with nobody else but him in the house, but that's, that's still... So he that's literally still lock you inside? For three days. For, for three days, for three days in, the house. in the house? In the house, and I couldn't oh scream for help, nobody. Oh they are nervous, they could not hear me. So it was, it was going to such an extreme. And, well, uh, it, there was no ch children bond, which I can, which I can imagine. It's, what it's kind just, of things did he do to you? Uh, so he was like abusive, he was very controlling. For, for him in his mind, I know it was a culture, different culture thing, but I think it's never culture, it's always individual's mind, yes. which is not, not healthy. Yeah. Um, I was just his property. I was belonging to him. I was, we never got legally married, but I was his wife. That's it. I belong to him. Yeah. I have anything else, it's just me talking. He would don't, wouldn't take that for an answer. And he was indeed powerful and capable, and he could, he could do those things. I had a, during this relationship, uh, random people seen our situation from and, and intervene and excuse me you cannot do this to the lady and uh, that's what i had all the time however it's not as easy once once uh, from my experience i think once woman will realize that hold on that is that is not a good thing yeah it's very often just too late you already you already been controlled yeah. until some yeah. point you'll be being manipulated this another way and those yeah. Yeah. and those gaslighters however you call them they they have their ways they very very often they, they would pick a weak woman they would see which woman some is some some the, some women, they're very vulnerable. They don't feel like they can fight back or do something about it. Yeah. But with me, I didn't stand up. I was like fighting back. No, I'm not taking this. Yeah. You know, luckily that I'm strong. Because if I wasn't this strong, maybe I, mentally I wouldn't be where I am today. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I but can. I can just say, like for me, for instance, I've never been in a physical abusive relationship, but. There was once I was actually dating somebody and he was literally looking after me, doing everything you could possibly imagine, but I noticed he was quite controlling mm. and he started to say things like, look me in the eye, you know, like you're talking about Caroline, the men state, yeah. you belong to me, you're mine, you're not yeah. going anywhere. And I became a bit scared and, you know, even though I was, my heart was in this, I knew this just wasn't right <laughs> and yeah. I literally had to run. Oh I had to run quickly before I knew it would lead to something else. You know, I know um, I'm quite strong willed, so I was able to do that. So, but it was, yeah, obviously I cried. Mm -hmm. I cried for months thinking, oh my God, you know, cause, but at the end of the day, I realized it was the best thing I ever did because he could have probably ended up being physical with me and locking yeah. me up, like you just said. And wow, it's a, wow. Yeah, well, a lot of people nowadays are going through this real domestic violence and other stuff and they 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 don't they can't they there's help out there but they just need to seek that help because i yes. did get help a little bit but it wasn't really enough help yeah they gave me some number to call i rang them they didn't really like they put me up in some temporary accommodation to get away from him 
and I stayed there for like a few days then I ended up after going back to him and it wasn't really that much help at the time but I yes. feel like there's still much there's still help out there yes and there's still something that you can we can do about this we can do about it yeah. what do you think Caroline we can do about this situation about domestic violence about abusive so like as, as us as women who are for example have this experience or some of our friends have this experience well at first I think it's very important so we don't keep it to ourselves we need to we need to even find a good friend it can be relative it can be just anybody we can trust mm -hmm. but we need to share this experience we need yeah. to talk about it yeah. the one thing that the, the gaslighters or the violators do they would love to close the woman close the woman in in their own bubble to, yeah. to restrict the contact with family with friends so nobody yeah. from outside would know yeah. so, you know, yeah. whatever is the neighbor is the is the friend from school but i think the first thing we should do is just to seek seek a contact with yeah. Yeah. Person, speak talk to about somebody it. open up so basically mm. any mm. woman that is in that situation it could it possibly yeah. even be a man we hear yeah. it that it happens yeah. opposite sides and, you know especially because it's a man they're afraid to come out you understand because they're looked at as they're supposed to be masculine how can a woman mm. who's supposed to be a weaker vessel should we say um be um, be abusive to you um, yeah, well, I think it's very vital, it's very important mm -hmm. we talk about it because that way we're able to express ourselves and that way we're able probably to get good advice, maybe something that would touch our hearts and maybe that friend will be able to get us some sort of help, you know. Um, Janet, yes, what do you have to say? Yeah, um, I don't know, I just feel like now my experience have actually helped me a little bit to make the right choices in men, but sometimes you... You can't really, you don't know who you meet. You meet them and they're nice yeah. in a few months and then you just see the ways, their ways change, you know. But if, you know, there's small signs that you can tell when someone is abusive because I didn't really see the sign at the time because I was young. Yes. But there is signs that you can tell and you just have to make sure that once you see those so, little signs, you just like can run away. Can you elaborate on the type of signs away. that we would see? Um, like possess, possessive, yeah, very possessive, be be possessive, controlling, mm. controlling. Um, yes. You know, like uh, yeah, like they, you mentioned some kind of like he wants to separate you from your friends yes. and your family, that's and you know there's an issue there. That's a very yeah. good, very good first sign if if a guy trying to sort of. Um, and so of course, he tell that you. it's just because we love each other. It's because like mm. I'm so into you. But as long as you would realize that you are being separated from any support you have, that is that is not that a healthy relationship. A, yeah, yeah. Even if it's apparently because we love each other so much, it's always look so. Otherwise, you wouldn't buy it. But yeah. the one very very fun aside, I wanted I wanted to bring up because it's uh, maybe not many people would think that that's that's a red sign in a relationship. It's. When somebody, when um, it, when we and my partner we are playing up, so sort of, uh, you know, fooling around and tickle each other's. If your partner tickles you, and you tell him to stop, oh, I've had enough, I'm giggling up, and see how does he gonna react? That's sort of like at early stages to pick up the signs, because obviously when we are gonna get him beaten up, we know that it's toxic. But the point is to realize it early enough and and prevent it. So when the person, when the boyfriend, for example, tickles you a lot, or and you tell him, look, stop. And if he will just back off, that is normal, normal, healthy individual who have a respect and, and, and realize that so you, your body belongs to you. What you're saying, so he yeah. knows when to stop and understand, if, okay, if he he's pushing boundaries. carry on tickling you, tickling you, or, or hold your hands and do the same, it means that he does not think that you, you have your right to your body. It's somewhere deeper, deeper psychology, yeah, you, you know, methods, but In a way, I do understand because I tend to see that that's what happens in a lot of rape cases, mm -hmm. you know they are into and they don't realize the lady saying stop i don't want this and they still persistent mm. which eventually leads to rape cases so yes pretty much a good yeah. point things like that also happen and, in toxic relationships uh, also mm. it's not good when the kids like they grow up and they see this happening to the the parents fighting you know like they don't know what's going on because when i was when I was pregnant, after giving birth, my daughter, two years old, she didn't know what was going on, but obviously she had to grow up, like, even now, she's a big girl, she didn't even know what was going on then. Yes. And she don't know why we separated or why we got di a divorce or whatever. Now it's like, you know, nothing to her because... I haven't really spoken to her about it because I feel like soon I will tell her why yes. you know things happen in the past and stuff. But I feel like yeah, the kids shouldn't really see this stuff 
happening yeah in the they relationship shouldn't, yeah, they shouldn't, shouldn't really because it affect them mentally yeah it was affecting her because the way like you know it was affecting her differently so you had to run away quickly yeah yeah i understand wow um well i'm happy that you're out of that situation now and you're actually a beautician now a therapist Yes. yes, and you've both been involved in events, and you're also a mar you're also a marketer and a promoter as a brand ambassador, aren't you? Yeah. So you guys are doing really great. That's amazing. Mm. I'm, we came out stronger. You came out stronger. Yeah. You found your way. You found your purpose. You're doing something brilliant. And, well, I'm just grateful. I'm happy because you don't hear that a lot. You don't hear, it's, sometimes it's too late for some women, and before you know it, that's the end of them. Mm. But... I'm happy and really glad. And thanks for coming and sharing yes, the story. Yes, that we've actually, you know, come out of it and, yeah, everything is fine. Mm. Some people going through domestic violence, they don't come out of it. Some of yeah. them died, some of them have injuries. Yeah. yeah. You I just, know, but... I just want to add, as, yeah. as long as you have a courage in yourself and you, you believe in your self-worth, it's not too late, whatever. Yes. The, the, it's too late when those things are gone in you. Then yeah. it's too late. It's, yeah. So you've had it here, guys, from Janet yeah. and Caroline. It's never too late once you're still alive. Just take the courage. Anyone, if you find yourself in an abusive relationship and you realise it's becoming too toxic, leave that relationship. Find the courage and believe in yourself that you can make it without that person. And thank you guys for coming once again. I really thank appreciate you. this. Um, it's been very touching. And I know it's quite a sensitive topic, but thank you for sharing. No okay. Okay, guys, so... Um, we're going on a quick break and we'll be back. Thanks.